LSD is not only a well-known psychedelic drug, but it was also studied extensively for its potential in psychotherapy in the early days of its use about 50 years ago. Those early studies didn't necessarily meet today's standards for clinical trials, but the previous research ended in the 1970s due to changing regulations and a prohibition against LSD. Today, LSD is once again being studied for its therapeutic use, this time in a carefully controlled clinical setting. In a recent study published in the journal Neuropsychopharmacology, a team of researchers investigated LSD's effects on fear recognition, emotional empathy, and sociality. Two groups of healthy participants took part in two sessions, once with a placebo and once while taking LSD. They were in a comfortable hospital setting, constantly attended by someone they'd met. And then, as they were coming down from the peak effects of LSD, but still under its influence, they took a series of tests. Matthias Lichty is a professor at the University of Basel in Switzerland and one of the paper's authors. So the tests we included were a standard emotional face recognition task. And typically on these images, you see an expression that is morphed to express a basic emotion, which could be, let's say, fear or happiness, and it's morphed by 10% steps, meaning somebody is laughing 10%, 20%, 30%. And then we were simply recording how well do our participants recognize these images. Then the next task was an empathy test. So this is a little bit more complex in that our participants saw images of people in a specific emotional situation and then they had to indicate what the feelings are and then also how much they feel with them, how much concern they have for them. They also had to correctly indicate the feeling which is sometimes labeled as uh, cognitive empathy. It's basically do they correctly recognize the state the people are in. And then at the end, we performed a test of social value orientation. And it's basically how competitive or how egoistic or how altruistic do I behave? Because the subjects had to give away or keep money for themselves. So what did you find? We found what was expected that LSD produces an alteration in, in, the, in consciousness with changes in meaning, perceptual changes and so on. So this is well described. Then more unexpectedly, we noted that LSD also produces some feelings that we have typically described with MDMA also, this means with ecstasy. This included feelings of openness, towards other people, feelings of closeness, um, higher feelings of trust, and also, especially at the higher dose, feelings of wanting to be with other people. Then, in addition to this, we noted that negative emotions were less well recognized. This included the perception of fear, but also the perception of sadness. Then in the empathy test, we saw a slight decrease in cognitive empathy, meaning that with LSD, the participants were less well able to correctly identify the emotional situations the people were in. This was not very surprising because there are some minimal deficits, of course, within, L within an LSD trip. However, they also felt more empathic for other people and especially for people in positive emotional situations. And finally, we saw an increase in uh, altruistic behavior. So the participants did not become altruists, but they were less competitive in giving away money or keeping money. And this again was similar to previously described for MDMA. And what do your findings suggest to you? So the most important finding in my view is that LSD has emotional effects that were to some extent unexpected and were very positive in, of course, a setting that's very supportive. And especially if we less well recognize negative emotions, then this could be of interest for any psychotherapeutic setting. Lichty says that the positive emotions could help the patient feel closer to a therapist. And if the patient under the influence of LSD is biased against negative emotions such as fear, this could help him or her be treated for such negative emotions. 
the study does have limitations. The participants were all psychologically and physically healthy, so it's unclear whether the results would hold true for patients. And the tests weren't done in a real-world therapeutic setting. And there are yet other studies still to be done on LSD, says Lichty. What we saw lately were many neuroimaging studies. And certainly we want to try to link what we see in these tests and in terms of subjective effects with the changes that we can assess using these different techniques of brain imaging. So this will be one area that we would like to, to link these two more objective measures with the more subjective measures. Then there are many basic aspects that have not yet been addressed with LSD. A very simple one is that we know very little about the relationship of the plasma concentrations of this substance with its effects. So typically when you develop a medication, you start with measuring the medication in the blood, which is called uh, pharmacokinetics. So this so far has only been done once or twice and actually within these studies for oral LSD. So this is very surprising, even in the many imaging studies that we now have, or the, the many data that we have from a few imaging studies, correctly said, we don't really know what the presence was of the of the actual substance in plasma. So many of the requirements that we today have for up-to-date studies are not yet met. So there are clearly a lot of holes in LSD research. What are some of the major challenges in moving this field forward? So far, there have been many regulatory issues, uh, political issues. So in many countries, it was or is still not possible to perform an LSD study, typically because it's the, the substance is scheduled as having no medical use. But recently we had studies in uh, typically the UK and uh, now also in Switzerland. So it seems to be possible at least in some countries and others will probably follow. Another issue is that the development of a new medication today would be very expensive, and this is typically pushed forward by the pharmaceutical industry. And in the case of these substances that have been around for a long time, probably it's more the public or private foundations or non-profit organizations who will have to pay for this. So funding could be an issue. Um, so a lot of the money that researchers will have to uh, to get for performing such studies will actually go into synthesizing the substance, monitoring studies, uh, doing quality tests on the substance itself, but also on the data that is that is being gathered. And this is certainly a novel high hurdle for any type of medication development. Based on your research, do you see potential for the clinical use of LSD if it can get past these hurdles? It seems that there is an interest of the public in, in having such substances. It seems even that some patients self-medicate their disorders using LSD or similar substances in an unregulated uh, context. There could even be uh, people providing such therapy, but it's not within a fully authorized medical setting. So obviously there is an interest by patients and very likely by the general public in having such substances being studied at least. So I would say that the big advantage now is that we are realizing that these substances should and can be studied and we are not categorically uh, saying there is no benefit. I'm not saying there is a benefit, but we need to test it first. And then conceptually, of course, it's very interesting if indeed a substance can use, for example, in psychotherapy and has then with single administrations a lasting effect on any disorder, let's say on anxiety, uh, this could uh, be very interesting for the patients, but also for public health, because the other option is uh, giving medications every day. They have side effects and may not even be beneficial. And uh, certainly a treatment that helps with single doses in the context of psychological or psychotherapy uh, that is of interest. And there seems to be an interest of the patients as well. They, they often prefer psychological treatments to daily medication. This is the podcast for the journal Neuropsychopharmacology. Matthias Lichty is co-author of the article, LSD Acutely Impairs Fear Recognition and Enhances Emotional Empathy and Sociality. 
To read this article, among others, visit www.nature.com NPP. I'm Cynthia Graber.